Yo, what is up? What is up? Welcome to another great episode of Rugby Swag. We got a lot to talk about today. You are, we are going to be talking about Netflix and their trailer for Six Nations coming through. We got World Rugby really, really stepping in their boundary. We got a guest with us today to talk about it. We got Argentina opening up the expansion of their rugby territory. Yo, it's getting wild over here. We have Owen Farrell about to leave England overall. We got online hate destroying rugby, apparently. And of course, what is the predictions for rugby in 2024? We got that and more. Of course, the great descriptions. But first and foremost, yo, let's hit that intro, y'all. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. You are now tuned in. Welcome to the Rugby Swag Show. Yo, man, I am so happy to be able to be back here. It is a great 2024 first episode of the year. Let's freaking go. We got a lot to take care of, but first and foremost, as we always do, because just because we changed up the intro doesn't mean that we changed up what's significant. I need y'all to please don't forget to sub like and subscribe to the show on here on Facebook, on YouTube. Of course, like it on Facebook. Of course, we know the places. Yo, if you guys can Follow us on Instagram at Rugby Swag Show. You can follow me on X at Gift A Bailu, at Gift Time Rugby on Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, and Twitch. Y'all, we need the consistency. But of course, if you're not able to make it and you're just able to just listen, yo, you can absolutely check us out on all our platforms on audio. That is Spotify, that is Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts for as long as that's remaining. I think it's like another year or so. But that is, and so many other more, if it, any popular one, basically all the popular audio podcasts. But y'all, I am so happy to be able to be here with you guys. I'm excited to be able to talk about what we got going on this week. I'm excited to talk about who we get to talk about with we got special guest mick feely uh former coach former um, constant entrepreneur and a forward thinker we're gonna bring him on to the show a little bit later on but before we get started as per usual yo we got to take care of our sponsor so we'll be right back because we got some great things happening in Netflix. Let's go. I'm going to let you get back to the show in a moment, but I want to talk to you about our sponsors, Health Enhanced Foods, the best specialty flowers in the business. What does that mean for you? That is the flowers that allow you to be able to get the nutritious need from your bread made. That's muffins, bread, croissants, whatever, pancakes and muffins. It will give you the opportunity to be able to get the best while still being able to eat like you wanted to. We have various amounts of products available for those who have special dietary needs to those who are looking for a special health outcome and of course because they're part of the rugby swag show we want to let you know that you got a chance to go to healthenhancefoods.com and use code rugby swag to be able to get 20 percent off your first order y'all this is something that you're going to need you got to build up have your energy at the best be the maximum it's 2024 let's do the best but now I want you guys to get into it. Let's get back to the show. All right, y'all. Look, man, this is uh, this is what it's about, right? This is what it's about. We have been waiting for this for over a year now. Talk about it. Netflix is back with the Six Nations documentary. They finally released the first trailer for it. Um, you know, I I got my feelings on it, but before I say anything about it, yo, let's uh, let's take a quickie quick look at it, and uh, then we can just talk about it. Because, uh, you know, Netflix. Netflix. That's uh, Six Nations. Well, straight to the chase. How tough do you have to be to play rugby? Look at my ears, man. See, this ear is actually fine. Kind of. Believe it or not, this is my good ear. Rugby requires an aggressive mindset. It's primal. Bone on bone. He's tough to keep in control. Of course he points out. It is time for the Six Nations. The Six Nations is the tournament to decide the best team in Europe. This is the oldest rugby competition on earth. Down goes Davis, just shot at the line. The rivalry is colossal. Ireland, the world number one. You're the ones that's getting hunted down. Give everything. Everything. Number two, Alcoa, in the CBD 
jouer comme on vous demande, on gagnera le match. Scotland believe that they could win this. The best of us beats any team in the world. To England, the head coach got sacked a month before the tournament. We've got to learn fast on the other teams. We are not taking a backward step. Embrace the fear. Wales are in turmoil. Don't put away anything soft. Well, we got Keno Gatter's back. This is a high demand environment. One bad moment, and you could cost your team a match. Players got to be able to deal with all the highs and the lows. Oh. As coaches, you've got to know what makes people tick. Always felt like an outsider. I feel like I've lost confidence. My body's absolutely broken. This is the last chance. I struggle with mental health for years. I'm not afraid to say it. The camaraderie is very important. That sense of togetherness. <laughs> a responsibility not only to my teammates but to my family my friends all right y'all look uh so we got it uh, with your thoughts let me know in the comments if you guys can of course you can always comment on facebook youtube twitch wherever enjoy be part of the engagement yo look first thoughts off of the look i mean it looks good it's a great trailer i believe like you know, it's been a while. They've been needing to do something that's different, even though they've done a couple of these documentaries. They did one, obviously, for New Zealand, you know, on Amazon Plus. If you guys didn't get a chance to see the one uh, about Guinness, premier, uh, the, the Premiership Rugby, uh, Mud, Sweat, and Blood uh, on Amazon Prime, solid documentary. That one was more about, like, the semifinals and finals for 2023's um, uh, Premiership Rugby Finals. You know, uh, not not a bad outcome, not a bad outcome. And now we have this, which it feels like the it feels exciting. We know there was controversy early on, a lot of it coming from Wales, uh, not wanting to show their absolute collapse of a rugby union and absolute collapse of a rugby nation. Um, but you know, I'm I'm interested. I think it looks like it's good. This is a good setup. I don't know what more it is. Cause I have this fear like they showed the best parts of the documentary. Um, apparently this is supposed to come out uh, uh, January 24th, so about a week before the Six Nations is about to begin, give or take. Um, you know, I, I, look, as, as a movie aficionado who loves to do a good rating system, eh, you know, I, I'm looking forward to it, but I don't always have the biggest trust. Uh, World Rugby didn't really like, what, or I'm sorry, Premiership didn't really like what they got from the mud, sweat, and blood uh, documentary that was on Amazon Prime, which I thought it was pretty good. There was a good amount of cussing, you know, yeah, you got to talk to the players. It wasn't really, it, it, it felt like it was the end of a story, so you didn't have a whole buildup. So this one, you know, they actually have it for the entire length of the 2022, uh, you know, Six Nations. So, I mean, for that one, I'm at least happy that we should get a full story arc, but Again, it's also rugby in Europe, so, you know, it's not always the most charismatic guys outside of, like, one or two people. So I'm interested to see how it goes, you know, what happened with Owen Farrell and England since leading before the, the Rugby World Cup. That was a whole bunch of controversy from, you know, Eddie Jones leaving to uh, the coach they have now coming into it. I really just want to see what's going on with Wales. That is the one that's most exciting to me. Ironically, I would have think the Irish one would have been more exciting, but as I watch them over there, over the Rugby World Cup, I don't think they're going to be that exciting. I think they're going to be chill. And I'm gonna be honest with you, in my documentary, I don't want to, I don't want chill. I need some extra. All right, I need I need some uh, real housewives of hip hop happening for a rugby. I need I need the real going through. And my worry is that they're going to be very very limited with it so let me know what you guys think about this uh let me know in the comments let me know uh you know in the discussion what where do you guys feel like this is going to end up taking its place uh within the um six nations uh echelon of it all um you know i i just i feel like it's one of those situations where you know it, it can go for for anybody but i don't know it's it's rugby it, whenever world rugby becomes greatly involved into it. And I know Six Nations is privately privately owned and also, you know, commercially owned, but uh, I'm just, uh, uh, I'm just always curious because I feel like there's this, uh, we need to be proper 
element to it, you know, uh, really push that, you know, hooligans game played by gentlemen. So that makes for boring kind of outcome to be perfectly, perfectly real with you. But I, like I said, I'm, I'm up to be able to listen. Let me know what you guys think. All right, y'all. Uh, we got uh, we got a special guest coming in. Yo, <laughs> World Rugby and USA Rugby are taking their stuff to another level. Uh, new teams being created. I'm uh, going to talk about it and bring on our expert. Uh, be right back uh, after this commercial break. But whew, let's go. Hey, everybody. This is just the break train sending out a personal little video diary to all you people out there where I am going to document me riding most of the way between Singapore and Tokyo for the 2019 Rugby World Cup. I needed help, and it came from Louisiana. We in Singapore, baby! Gift from Gift Time Rugby USA is an extroverted tour de force. But what unites us is a hunger for adventure. After KL, Kuala Lumpur. Gift, where are we? We're in Phoenix! Mount Fuji, baby! Our love of Asian rugby culture. One, two, three, center! Yeah! Rugby is starting to develop here in Cambodia for women as well. We're out here, we're running out of energy, we're running out of money, and we're feeling isolated. And yet at that critical moment, friends, family, sometimes complete strangers, come on board. Before you know it, we're back in the game. Tokyo, here we come. Malaysia, Thailand, Cambodia, Vietnam, watch the full adventure at crugby.vhx.tv that's c like s e e rugby.vhx.tv all right y'all look we are back welcome back all right y'all so biggest news that i think happened in rugby while we were gone is the announcement that world rugby and usa rugby decided that they are going to be creating a developmental team in association with the Major League Rugby um, League here in the U.S. to put in a developmental team for in MLR. So we are getting our 12th team. We lost two. We gained one back, I guess, essentially. So, you know, we're getting closer back to the mean. Uh, this is one that I think has been really, really touchy. There's a lot to be able to take from it. I don't feel like I'm qualified enough to do this just by myself. So I want to bring on our special guest onto this. He is a former coach. He has been playing rugby his whole life. He is a rugby entrepreneur. He is a marketing rugby man. Sorry, not rugby management, sports management professional. I want to bring in our friend of the show, been on multiple times, Mick Feely. Yo, Mick. Brother, welcome on to Rugby Swag. How are you doing? Um, I was going to say, I've been called a lot of things, uh, expert, maybe not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, you know, we're here to change the narrative. They, you, you didn't know. 2024 is about honesty and truth now. We are revealing and pulling back. <laughs> but, you Thanks know. having me anyway. <laughs> hey, man, it's a pleasure. So, obviously, we're talking USA Rugby, World Rugby, announcing the news about creating an MLR team to be able to help develop uh, guys who haven't been able to play as much simply because of the fact that they say that MLR's international numbers uh, disproportionately yeah. do not help USA players. And uh, I know this is a, a position where you've spoken a lot about the impact of USA Rugby in the development of rugby from a grassroots level and what the what the actual job world rugby should do uh for for you whenever you first heard about this news what were your thoughts about this um i mean at the time it was just like oh what are we doing more of the same you know top down um i think you know having having a little bit of time to think about it you you can see some of the sense in it um First of all, it still is a top-down. 
you know, so chasing after marketing dollars, TV money, stuff like that. Like, yes, a lot of that will come, but um, we're stepping over dollars to pick up dimes at the moment. And we should think about uh, the grassroots and what that market represents in terms of things they actually need and then sell it to them, like kit and equipment. I've said that before. But um, in terms of sort of a step towards the, the grassroots, it, it's a good idea because it's a development program to some extent, but at the same time, it's in a, in a professional competition. So they'll have to meet certain standards. Um, they don't get a pass just because it's USA rugby or, or world rugby or anything like that. Um, you know, fan, fans will want to be entertained. They'll want them to be successful. Um, it's well, a necessary okay. step on the pathway though, as well, you know, like they, if, if you think about, who the players are, are, are purported to be, they're the stars of tomorrow for the when the World Cup comes. You know, like th right. there is there is some sense to it. Um, again, though, it's um, well, let's assume they paid the seven to ten million dollars in a franchise fee. That's good, that right. helps the league, especially having other teams drop out. Um, but that seven to ten million dollars that could have been spent on building infrastructure to support a participation boom, because none of it exists. There's there's more clubs in Ontario with clubhouses than there are in the whole U.S. We've got no running water, like, so I would just challenge them to say, okay, if you're going to invest that money in a team, spend the same or more on building out a a, a base. I do. I like it. And I, you know, I'm in agreement with a lot of that, especially when it comes to dividing the creating the base, because I think for me, the biggest issue had been like, what is the end game purpose that you want? Is it to just have the players be the best or do you want to have an audience that can be able to support a team that can be the best? And we know a lot of this goes to the Rugby World Cup for you. You know, uh, you know, a lot of people will say and you kind of spoke to this. A lot of people say it's not bad to be able to have the developmental team it's not bad to be able to uh you know give more opportunity for players to be able to train but how do you think that it would affect something like the u.s national team where it typically has been considered a culmination of what you would consider the best players in a nation uh to be able to play for that national team and then represent abroad now that you have this developmental squad do you feel like this is something that would create a bias for that USA rugby team? Or do you think that's something where it's like, okay, you know, we need this because they're not getting enough on the other side. Like they're not getting enough uh, professional play. So we do absolutely need to, to see where that can go. Um, I hadn't really thought about it, to be honest, but I think um, I could see where there, there is a potential for bias, certainly. Um, that would be a natural sort of, evolution i suppose because they're in control of that um going back to what you said at the start look what's their end goal their end goal is that the world rugby ran the numbers or whoever did the, the study ran the numbers and told world rugby that they could they could generate five billion dollars so that's their end goal which fair enough um they're going to do what they need to do or what they think they need to do to accomplish that one of those things for a successful world cup to generate that money is a strong US national team. So yeah, look, that you, you've got to get the home crowd on board. That's that's all normal. I just think that um US rugby in general, in terms of infrastructure, facilities, because it's so spread out so big, like we're just starting a lot further behind than people realize. And again, from where you've researched, and we've talked about this behind the scenes, and I, I love it. From where you've researched, we talk about the population of rugby fans that exist in the U.S. and to some extent what we take from around the world. It's only me, uh, you, isn't it? Say that again. It's only us two, isn't it? A couple of others. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, when we're talking about like what the actual value, I guess, of our fan base within the US, let's ignore the rest of the world. You speak on something where it's about selling back within. The What is that importance that from your perspective and with a little bit more depth, that World Rugby's focus or USA Rugby's focus 
should be on not just creating a stronger grassroots, but creating the commerce within it to be able to support the subscription base, if you want to say, uh, for the future of the sport itself. Um, well, it used to be their job um, to do all of those things, but it's not anymore. They devolve power. So after the bankruptcy and the restructure, now you've got USA Club Rugby, Youth and High School Rugby, and USA Collegiate Rugby slash NCR and Alphabet Soup. But um, USA Rugby was very fortunate in that they basically absolved themselves of any true responsibility. Um, I think, again, that we're, we're weaker divided. I said that, I've said that many times. Um, and I think that if World Rugby or if USA Rugby wants to own a professional franchise, then be a professional franchise, don't be the national governing body. Um, I don't think it's the job of a national government. Like, how many other national governing bodies or world governing bodies own a franchise or a team in a league? Like, what, I, if I was Canada, I'd be a bit upset right now because the Arrows sure could have done with this. So could New York, you know? Um, True. Everyone True. Where was the investment that could have been gone in, into or those? The Irish or Jersey Reds or, or you name it, however many clubs have gone belly up in the last two years. So look, it, that's what I mean when I say it's more of the same. It's, it's putting all your eggs in the... Not necessarily in one basket, but but pulling all your resources up to the top, making it top heavy and unstable. Um, that's part of the need for for recycling revenue into the base. Um, we'll see what happens. I think. Man, um, I love it. The I love it. Netflix stuff was awesome, and I think <laughs> that's brilliant. You know, that's clearly CVC having an yeah. influence. Think about the timing of it. You get to watch an entire Six Nations before the Six Nations. Right. Honestly, look, it's in, in, the inside, right, where we all want to be, we all want to be in the locker room. We all want to be in the huddle or on the training pitch. Like, fantastic. But that's, what a good idea. I, like, I just credit where credit's due. I look, I give the credit where it's due. I just hope that they actually are able to fulfill it because, you know, it's one of those situations where if you can get people inside and it's not to just copy something like F1 uh, drive to survive, but if you really can get and make, characters in yeah. a sense out of the players then at least it creates a driving force where it goes back to what we talk about develop the grassroots now sell within the grassroots now you're able to build your spectator base now it makes sense to be able to continue to develop from the bottom up instead of the other way down because you need to well, be able to have both ways really that's the truth true point. that's true true, true. and but i but without over focusing yeah yeah and <laughs> I mean, it's sort of, I'd heard a while ago that, that there was a potential for things to move to Charlotte anyway, um, yeah. but that, nothing more than that, to be perfectly honest with you. But it seems a bit of a knee-jerk reaction. Um, like I said, it will help the league. They obviously would have been in a, in a bit of a difficult situation because of the, the, the teams folding and stuff like that. That affects all their sponsorship, all their match, match day revenues, broadcasts, all that kind of thing. Um, so, so from that perspective, it's a good idea. Like, I, I understand it, but it's how strategic was it? How much in advance was this prepared? Um, as opposed to, you know, the, the Netflix thing, which is clearly strategic. It's a good idea. They've thought it out well. Everyone's going to be absolutely pumped for this Six Nations having watched the, having watched the show. Right? It's well done. Exactly. No, I'm not uh, a mark, no, no, no. But, but it's quite clearly thought out. Say that again. I said I'm not a marketing expert, but it's quite clearly well thought out. Right. No, I agree. I, I to kind of speaking to your point, I'm not able to put the comment up, but a uh, comment from Instagram, LL Rugby was saying, "Where was FIFA when MLS was dying?" It's in that same guy. <laughs> well, it's not their job. Ultimately, it's not their job. This is this is extraordinary circumstances, right? So it makes sense to have the pathway, introduce you early to the stars of tomorrow, building towards the World Cup, all kinds of things like that. But, you know, where does it stop? Right. It's, no. It, again, look, they, they've got a proven model. They're probably budgeting 40 to $50 million on this in terms of the length of the investment, um, if you were to cap it at a certain amount, because they spent about $40 million on Fiji 
and the drawer and all that stuff. So, you know, that's that's that kind of that kind of gives them a, a benchmark for what it costs to get a team to the World Cup and perform and entertain and and get the crowd behind them. You know, true story. True story. I want to thank you so much. I know this is quick. We usually are good for two hours, but just want to get your thoughts on this real quick. Thank you so much for your, as I said before, expertise. And of course, I know that you are always moving forward on stuff. I can't wait to see what you got going on. Guys, keep up with him over uh, uh, over the time. Wise man. Mick, thank you. So Thanks very much. Appreciate it. I want to thank again Mick for being able to come onto the show. Always, as one of my guys, I appreciate him. He knows what he's talking about. Y'all, we're gonna be right back. We got just one another commercial break for you. We're gonna be right back. Uh, man, Argentina is something to be uh, paid attention to because they are about to make a move. So, guys, stay tuned. We're gonna about to talk about that a little bit more. Be right back. Rugby swag. Cheers. I'm going to let you get back to the show. I hope you guys are enjoying it so far. But in 2024, it is necessary. I'm going to let you get back to the show. I hope you guys are enjoying it so far. But in 2024, it is necessary that you have your own website. Don't let anybody tell you social media is the only place that you can be able to advertise. You need your own home. And the best home to be able to purchase online is through Green Geeks. This is the web host platform that gives you the most for the cheapest price, y'all. I've been using Green Geeks for almost 10 years now, and off the WordPress platform, I've been able to customize and create websites to my desire and to the liking that I need. Included with it, they give you some of the best customer service in the business, and I cannot say enough about them. They have been able to be a great assistance to everything I do. And if you guys want to be able to start today at $4.95 per month, go to the link in the bio or the link in the caption, depending on where you're at, and go use it to help the show and get your site up right away. There's no reason that you need to be having complications, that you need to be having paying thousands of dollars to be able to do it, or even thousands of dollars per month to be able to get your website up. Go to Green Geeks, check it out, support the show. All right, let's get you back. Brand new news, I man, Argentina out here doing the absolute most. And I'm actually very much in accordance with uh, the, what they have going on right now. Ah, oh, man, well, welcome to 2024. This is uh, uh, definitely showing its, showing its ass right now. <laughs> but, yo, Argentina has been making some moves. Uh, got this news from my guy, uh, Leandro uh, Condry. He is a consultant out of um, Argentina. The man has been around Italy, around South America. He's probably one of the most connected people in Latin America, and I'm including Italy in that as well. Uh, one of the most connected people in Latin America. He put up some news recently about Argentina rugby and their plans that they have had moving forward. And uh, I want to read off a few of the things that they have going on right now. Um, for uh, their this next year. So it looks like in this next year, all right, number one, Argentina is creating a separate entity to manage a new super rugby competition with a chair and a chief executive officer and a board member. Number two, the Jaguars are planning on returning back to um, – Back in 2026, hold on, I'm getting, I'm, messaging is all messing up as well, too. They're returning back in 2026 to, man, 2024, you're doing it to me, uh, to Super Rugby ahead of the 2026 season. Uh, number three, they are setting up a Super Rugby team in the U.S., and that might not only pivot towards the U.S.A., with Moana Pacifica to relocate from Fiji, from uh, um, uh, Moana Pacifica from Samoa to uh, to Hawaii. I think actually they're based out of Australia, but uh, the Tonga Samoa team 
transferring to Hawaii. Now, if you guys remember last year, we talked about <laughs> last year, we talked a, a little bit about the um, Moana, uh, the former Hawaii MLR team that was potentially trying to be there, led by the two All Blacks. Well, it looks like we're trying to see that happen again, but with the Super Rugby teams. And then lastly, the Cheetahs and Pumas, which are uh, Chile and uh, which are both Argentina's, uh, uh, so, no, uh, uh, Cheetahs of South Africa and Pumas, obviously Argentina, could take part, uh, particularly if they play in Perth, where expats are a, form a key part of the rugby community. So. Argentina is making some significant, significant moves in what they are trying to do with their rugby territorialism. And I, for one, am absolutely for it because this is a side that, one, understands uh, the uh, process of jumping from a Tier 2 to a Tier 1, even though Argentina has been a powerhouse for multiple decades. But they've been considered as some of the lower end of the tier one despite the fact that they've had success in semifinals obviously they've been killing it in sevens they have a robust system they've been super rugby before like this is a team that has absolutely shown that they are able to compete but they have been one that wants to be able to grow the rugby in their area we've heard from august augustine pichot uh about his desire to see rugby develop uh, from world rugby, uh, see rugby develop from an organic standpoint, speaking a lot to what Mick was talking about at the grassroots before. This is a blueprint of how to expand and grow as a tier one. And Argentina is one that has this huge South America base that they can do a lot of damage with. Um, obviously, Argentina has a doesn't have the strongest economy, going on right now but uh on the flip side they are super strong from a rugby economic standpoint the next competitor being ironically brazil from an economic standpoint and developing from a rugby standpoint i think obviously i think we all know from a rugby standpoint we're talking about uruguay uruguay and um uh what do you call it uh uruguay and uh uh chile obviously making more impact but benefits greatly and we see it now even with the miami sharks even though it's an mlr team and it's privately owned uh this is a argentina side in in works right here so they are getting their guys everywhere and you know what that also means they're also accessing new revenue streams uh, bringing back super rugby for the jaguars is horrible from a travel standpoint but they get a chance to tap into the tv money that could go there it's not very much but it's still something and it developed with the best uh, moving into Hawaii, I think this one's a little bit more controversial in the sense that um, Hawaii might not be the best audience, but we also know there's a lot of Poly uh, Polynesians and very uh, a lot of Asian connection, a lot of uh, uh, U.S. Uh, U.S. Um, American Samoa. Just that that area is very filled. It is significantly more expensive than probably any other area, but. You know, they can have a connection and build a home base there. Hawaii is five hours away from, you know, the coast of the U.S. on its own. So just in and of itself, you're talking about a situation where, um, as, as one would say, uh, you can still tap into a culture that might not be fully maximized because of the, the circumstances that it's in geographically. Um, but Argentina really trying to sh put their foothold everywhere, I think is literally the blueprint that goes. I The only thing that I think they're missing is probably setting up either documentary or a parody show in association with this growth so that people can follow their journey as it goes. And it will help them get ready for, obviously, Rugby World Cup in uh, uh, <clears throat> 2029 and uh, 2020 seven and then subsequently 2031 and it makes sense to me that it looks like they're probably gearing up to try and make a push to host a rugby world cup because once it hits the u.s south america is definitely next on the list and argentina i know as a brazilian uh permanent resident i i i'm all brazil but argentina is definitely a landscape that can hold events and economically would benefit 
from a rugby world cup occurring. And I think would probably have something similar to what happened to uh, Japan in 2019, where you have a massive amount of tourism, you get great in, uh, uh, engagement by the locals, the money would stretch. And I think it would be a locale that would be probably the best. And on top of that, it would be summertime. It would be a summertime, um, summertime rugby world cup, no more winters on the side there. So I think this is something that is particularly interesting uh, to be able to do. I love what Argentina is getting done here. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about it more maybe next week, bring on another expert on there because I have the limited knowledge, but I'm seeing it and the picture makes the most sense to me. Let me know what you guys are thinking about this. Uh, like, where do you guys feel like Argentina's growth is? Because we see them in sevens. They're absolutely killing it from the men's side. The women's side still needs development, but they're absolutely doing their damage where it needs to be. I, I want to know where you guys' thoughts are when it comes uh, to this. All right. Uh, next up, y'all, we have a, a little bit of a, a change up. Uh, you know, there's some interesting stuff when we're talking about what, how uh, rugby is um, being affected by a growing audience. Uh, the, the, not growing, but a, the traditional audience. Uh, 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 and want to talk a little bit about how that is actually impacting rugby because one of the coaches out here is out here saying, yo, uh, I don't know, I don't know what you guys are feeling right now, but I know that there is something that is hurting rugby right now. Uh, so let's get into that one. Oh, before we continue on, um, I want to talk about a comment that we have on Instagram. Again, can't catch it on here, but if you guys want, you can follow on Instagram, obviously uh, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. Uh oh, Rugby said maybe with Netflix, they could, they could and should include the women's side of Six Nations in the coming years. I will say this, um, without um, necessarily being a detractor, I 100% agree um that you women six nations needs to get its own doc which i think it got a little bit um through tiktok i don't think it should be attached to the men's uh six nations um in the coming years i think it should be a separate entity in fact i would also hope that it either goes on netflix or that they find a deal with apple um obviously they or with wb because the Guinness uh, the women's premiership rugby has a partnership with TNT already. So it would make sense for them to work with Warner Brothers. Even though I'm not the biggest fan of Warner Brothers, I think that's a platform that could do work, put it on Max or HBO Max, depending on what part of the country you get this at. Uh, and it would be one where they would develop strongly off of that one. Netflix obviously is the top gun, but I say, Go work where your partners are. Work where you are wanted, not where you des not where you have to beg. Uh, and we have to see what happens with the Six Nations with the men's side. You know, it could go in either way. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> Oregon Rugby League uh, said, "Yo, when you talking some Pacific Coast uh, Rugby League and Rugby League in the Americas? Yo, we got some great interviews. We're gonna be setting up for that. Uh, obviously, they got their." match in uh las vegas coming up so you know we're going to be able to talk a little bit of rugby league it's 2024 we adding it all in here we're adding it all in here at this point so i, I i'm looking forward to to being able to do that uh in the meantime i want to turn to uh as a, a comment that was made um by steve borthwick uh borthwick who is the head coach of england rugby you guys know him from there, obviously, had their run within the Rugby World Cup. Probably did better than a lot of people expected. Still underperformed by a lot of standards. Uh, but he spoke to something that I think is actually uh, something to be to be curious um, about. And that was about rugby union, all right? That rugby is getting hurt because of the fact that online abuse is getting out of control. Now, for me, I've not 100% the biggest, you know, 
oh, you know, woe is the players. I, I, I do feel like when you're in the public stage, and especially in sports, there's a level of um, backlash, if you want to say, that you, you have to receive just for literally existing. I, I know it's not the most fair thing in the world, but it's, it's, it's part of the game, right? Um, but I do feel like there is a level where there's crossing the lines, though you can't really control it. So Steve Bor Borthwick uh, talked about it in terms of the online abuse that was driving that's driving people out of rugby. I uh, spoke of Owen Farrell, who decided to take a step back from England national team because of abuse. We talked about the referees who have decided to take a step back from rugby because of abuse. Uh, and and it's a, a consistent theme that's happening. Uh, I, it's something, you know, it happens in all sports, but is it maybe happening more in rugby? Uh, I remember talking with George Hook on uh, the show Rugby Odd, run by Rugby Wrap-Up with Matt McCarthy, uh, John Bradford Layfield, uh, the champ, Matt McCarthy, uh, uh, the, the, the rugby host of the USA. Um, you know, we, we talked about it, and George talked about the fact that he felt that rugby is being hurt because of the fact that it is no longer just a player's sport. Uh, essentially that more people are entering who have never played rugby uh, and watching the game as opposed to in the past where you had, you know, your interaction because you played rugby and then you watched it. And so you had a relative experience and that was why you could be sympathetic for it. For me, I don't know if I truly feel like this is something that uh, is beneficial, uh, you know, rugby needs to grow outside of being able to play. It needs to be a better spectator sport. Um, but at the same time, you know, you want to make sure that it is also being protected. As far as online, the best you can do is block. Blockity, blockity, block, 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 and make sure you don't hear it. If the abuse is coming out of the media, I mean, to some extent, you got to suck it up because the media plays as a mouthpiece for you. Um, they're your marketing agents, uh, good, bad, or all in between. Uh, in terms of the, uh, uh, if it's coming from internal, you know, that is something that you have to come to terms with and, and deal with that up front. But to say that it's running people out, I think that's a little bit exaggerated. Uh, I do think that you need to protect. And, you know, as teams, you need to find ways to make sure that your players have mental health coaches. Uh, and you need to make sure that they're doing all right. If you're not taking care of them, well, of course, this is going to all affect them. This is every sport. Um, but, you know, you can't control it. And the more that you say you don't want it to happen, and this is where older mindsets come in and don't realize, you're going to only increase how much more people are really about to go in on you about the issues that you have. And the Internet is unforgiving, especially X and Instagram to an extent. But really X and Reddit are going to be absolutely unforgiving to you and they're going to mention you and they're going to tag you up and they're going to try and drill you down. So you got to find ways to either block it out, separate yourself out, or you have somebody there that you can be able to remove and, and talk this out a little bit more. So that's, 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 that's what all I'm saying, you know, going through it. All right, y'all, we got one more commercial break. We're going to come back continuing on this story. Uh, man, Owen Farrell, uh, man, that man is really saying deuces to England. We're going to be right back after this uh, commercial break because this one's interesting. And of course, we're also going to talk predictions for 2024. What are we expecting from rugby in this time period? This is Rugby Swag Show. We will be right back. Before I let you guys get back to it, I want you guys to go check out RugbyOutletMall.com. Yo, this is the place where we are bringing in casual rugby wear. We're trying to set up the designs, make sure that we are giving you something to represent rugby. That's not just a jersey, and that's not just your kit. It is something that you and your friends and your mama and your kids and your parents and your best friend and your wife and your husband and your boyfriend and 
girlfriend and your they and just make sure that everybody is able to rock some rugby gear without having to necessarily be stuck to any one type of rugby gear. We want it for your day-to-day, everyday life. I know that's redundant, but that's how beautiful we want it to be. You know, definitely check out our most recent update, our rugby swag show shirts. Uh, They're available now for purchase. You guys can get it. And for any first-time buyers, I'm talking to you. Yo, I'm giving you guys... 20% 20% off the first purchase. Take as many as you want, 20% off the first purchase. And of course, if you guys get on the newsletter, you guys are going to see more coupons and discounts that come along with that as well too. But 20% off, and all you guys need to use is coupon code GROWRUGBY. That is G-R-E-A-U-X RUGBY. Great quality gear. Definitely something for your presence, something to be able to give. Obviously, we just got past the year, so that means birthdays are coming out. Valentine's Day is just around the corner, and you have so much more. Go hook your family. Hook your people up with what's right. Hook your people up with what's right. Go to RugbyOutletMall.com and enjoy out. And, of course, it helps support the show and our media endeavors. Let's get you back. All right, y'all. We got a nice one coming in. Uh, Obviously, like I said, we talked about Owen Farrell. It looks like he is heading over to Rossing 92, uh, possibly, possibly. And we talked about this a little bit a few weeks ago uh, last year <laughs> uh, about the possibility of Mario Toji moving on because of reduced salary or uh, having to separate because of the fact that Premiership Rugby is reducing its salary cap by almost $2 million per year. And it wasn't already very much to begin with. Uh, we're talking about a $10 million case. But Owen Farrell is being wooed also by Ross 92. This is the same team that got uh, Sia Khaleesi um, to go from South Africa all the way over to Ross 92, which they are top of the roster. So it would be a good thing. And look, this speaks a lot to the volume of what is the impact that's happening with rugby. I think a lot of people worry about the fact that, hey, uh, you know, are we going to be – are we going to be overly focused on money and hence ruin the game, which I think is a, just a reductionist thought process like, oh, man, once money comes in, it messes it all up. No, the issue is not that money came in. The issue is that money is not growing and you're doing desperate things because you don't have it. It's broke mindset, right? We're broke in rugby. We're, we're broke. The system is well, it's a little bit broke, but from a business model standpoint, it's a broke setup. And so you're doing things. Right now, we know France, top 14, absolutely killing it when it comes to paying players because they just use money like it's water that they get weird debt tax stuff that comes off from it. Um, Japan Rugby League 1 getting players. Why? Because they usually have companies attached to them. They're not directly attached. Now the companies are more of the sponsors of the teams that they normally previously were the owners of, but it's still that same concept. And is England with Premiership Rugby falling apart because the model is failing. We already lost two teams. It looks like there probably could be more on the way if the bleeding doesn't stop. So an Owen Farrell, who is not playing for his uh, uh, national team in the Six Nations, a captain, an active captain, is not playing for his Six Nations team. He is not playing for the national team, and he may soon no longer play for the does professional team that he has been with his entire professional career, which is basically his whole life. Uh, we're seeing of Mario Toji. Could he possibly go as well too? that Saracens team slowly falling apart? Like, this is a big deal in the structure of rugby. I do wonder if there could be a consolidation where it's not just the European best tech cup or you get the the uh urc or you then you get top 14 but there could be consolidation that involves everybody kind of moving into a top 14 or becoming just the urc and reducing the amount of games so that they can get better distribution on the money you know south africa came up to urc because obviously one it was better travel but two financially more prevalent for them so it's 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 hard to be able to say like you know, ooh, do we do, do we got something here? Is there is there something that should be 
should be looked at in in this instance uh with with Farrell and knowing that as a captain like a captain is we already know DuPont's not continuing on with the Six Nations team so he can get ready for the Olympics with France I mean rugby is changing its structure overall and I think it's very 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 important that we are uh watching that one and I love the fact that we have that as a watching concept uh overall um but what are you guys thoughts like what is your thoughts on the premiership uh rugby I think on the show there were uh JBL talked about the factor of maybe there should be a worldwide URC where each region has their professional club teams and then they come together as club teams to uh, compete against each other. I think this proposal has also been kind of put together with world rugby with a possible um, club rugby world cup kind of situation. So, you know, we could see that and that might be the saving grace because we have so many layers and they're kind of eating each other up. Uh, Mick in the past has talked about it as a uh, farming and instead of going to, go harvest we are milking the cow that's skin and bones basically right now and seeing it so let me know where you guys thoughts are in the comments let me know where you guys feel with all this all right lastly before we let it go yo what are some of the predictions that we have for 2024 all right what are some of the predictions look for me i'm i'm all about trying to see what the future is and i think 2024 is an absolutely pivotal pivotal year uh, for for rugby. So let me throw some music on. I don't have the list with me, but um, you know, I, I want to I want to get the feel. I want to get the feel correct. You know. All right. So what are we going to be seeing 2024 uh in the this new year? Um one, I do believe that we will see the rise the beginning rise of african rugby all right I, I know i'm african all right i know of course i should be biased but no i actually think this is something to be watched number one we are seeing the development of uh the spring box women's side a team that was programmically weak just three years right after the pandemic uh, but the rise they've made automatically qualifying for the Olympics, starting to see some progress within their 15 side, uh, playing hard. I think that we're seeing it. Uh, number two, not, not number two. In addition, you see Nigeria rugby has now come back into the fold. And so that is a population of 250 million people at potential. Uh, there is a massive rugby population in London and a bit within the U.S. Uh, that play rugby in addition to those who play rugby in the country itself. And if they can get their machine going like they do with the music, that is a beast that you do not want, that you actually want to have happen uh, and, and develop very, very strongly. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Uganda rugby and uh, starting to make it tries. Kenya rugby uh, continue to hold the plateau, but Ugandan rugby is starting to make it tries, starting to make a presence. They're starting to be more impactful in bigger matches, which allows them to be seen. If they can get their funding correctly, especially from a national standpoint, when it comes to Olympic standings for the future, you're going to see them rise uh, and really become a powerhouse uh, the way that they should be. Number two, in the U.S., we are going to see the beginning stages of a North America versus South America club battle. MLR versus Super Rugby Americas. Two sides of the professional sides. World Rugby right now is developing, uh, trying to develop the MLR side with the uh, USA Hawks. Now, if you guys don't know, we didn't talk about it in the segment, but the USA Hawks previously were playing in Super Rugby Americas for like two or three games uh, last year uh, before the season ended. It wasn't really much. It was really just test games, but they were really considering putting it there before saying, let's go to MLR because I guess promote, you know, your countryside's competition. But these two competitions could be really the Super Bowl element that North America needs and create almost a URC necessity that we're seeing over in Europe. I don't know if it's going to raise the competition significantly for both sides, but I think it will be actually must-see TV um, because I think it's a great rivalry. Argentina, uh, Argentina, uh, Uruguay, 
look at a Paraguay, uh, Chile, really seeing their pro side in a playoff against the MLR side, even with some of those guys haven't played in MLR. And I, I think it also takes away a lot of that uh, restriction of players. So you don't have players that are Argentinian or Chilean who are playing for the MLR teams needing to like come back. You get like your straight impact sides going at the same time. So I think that's number two for the predictions. Number three, I think this... Um, this Olympics is going to be set the standard for what is going to happen. Um, was it the Olympics, yeah. What we'll see from rugby sevens, uh, again, moving forward. Now we've had two Olympic sides to hear me out. We've got, we've had two Olympics so far, 2016, then obviously 2020, 2021 Olympics. Uh, both of those have shifted the the schedules of how we are playing the HSBC Sevens tournament to the extent that they even changed the freaking logo um, and even utilizing the first, second, uh, the gold, silver, bronze aspect um, and in addition to the point system. That Olymp this Olympics now has the addition of uh, bringing in the Challengers Cup to be able to bring more teams in. I think we're going to be seeing a lot more relegation that's going to exist within the HSBC sevens because of the Olympics and getting, finding ways to get the biggest Olympic teams over there. You know, I, I it's small, but it's actually really big and it makes for a differentiating comp competition and diversity. We still got the repoche that's still going to happen. And the possibility of not having a great Britain's men's or a South African men's or, uh, um, uh, Canada, uh, men's the possibility of not having that in Kenya or so that is wild. That is wild, and I don't know how many, uh, how much uh, world rugby wants to have that be a consummate thing, but I think that relegation, uh, is actually going to be huge possibility for these other teams to see what we can build out from there. But you know, we'll go from there. And my last prediction, my last prediction, I think think we're going to see another two teams in the premiership actually crash um it's not because no honestly it's it's because they're just not their model hasn't worked it hasn't worked um you know i i don't know what to expect from them to be able to build on but they're reducing i don't know if they have the leverage to be able to keep going on the way that they do on the flip side I think that this MLR year might be easily the best year that we've seen. I think this summer of losses put a different fire inside the owners. I think now that they, it's not that they just have something to prove. I think that they absolutely have, or their egos are now at stake. And I think that they felt the insult. They felt the vitriol. Or they felt the fear and that no matter what, they're not going to let the money loss stop them. And they're going to find a way to keep trying to invest and fund. I, I think before this, I was a little bit more doom and gloom with the MLR. But I think now I feel more confident about them, about what they can possibly do. So let me know what your predictions for 2024 are uh, with, uh, with rugby. Uh, rugby union, rugby league, doesn't matter what. Uh, but I want to know what you guys are thinking in, in this situation. Uh, I just, let's, let's, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. All right, y'all. And y'all, that's all we have for today. I want to... I want to thank you guys so much for being willing to come on. Um, 2024, it's great to be back. We're going to see you here next week. Actually, want to let you know we got an interview with uh, Pr uh, Prairie View a &M captain and president Craig Dawson. Great interview by a guy who has been watching this program develop over the last uh, three years, four years. Uh, transition, a great kid down in Texas at an HBCU. You guys are going to want to pay attention and listen in. And of course, definitely check out some of our other podcasts uh, previously. Uh, we've got some great guests and we have great guests coming up. Um, I want to thank uh, Mick for coming on. Thank you guys for staying tuned. And of course, we're not changing a thing in this situation in 2024. I hope that you are happy. 
I hope that you are healthy. And I hope that you guys absolutely know that you are 100% highly favored by just being here. We want you here. We need you here. And we are honored to be part of your experience as well. Until next time, y'all. Cheers.